Welcome to the Muscle Building Mastery Podcast, where guys that want to build muscle come to learn how to do it properly. We understand that there's more to building muscle than mindlessly throwing weights around and chugging mass gainer shakes. We're not interested in quick fixes or anabolic assistance. We're interested in mastering the art, science and skill set required to stack on real muscle and strength. My name's Andy Clements and for the last 12 years I've devoted my life to figuring out how guys like us who don't have amazing genetics, don't have five hours a day to spend in the gym and don't want to take steroids as a shortcut can build insane amounts of muscle and strength in weeks and months, not years and decades. This podcast is the result of all the lessons I've learned along the way and it will give you the blueprint to building more muscle in less time. To get you started, head to www.musclebuildingmastery.net to download your free six-week workout plan. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Andy Clements. Welcome back to another episode of the Muscle Building Mastery Podcast. This is episode number 59. Um, Now, it's been a little while since an episode of this podcast. I've been a little busy, a little bit slack on the whole podcasting front, but I am much more active um, over on my Instagram channel, Andy Clements 01. So um, there's plenty of good muscle building fat loss tips going down over there. Um, And don't forget, you can get emails from me if you download the um, six weeks to mass workout plan. Um, in the intro of this uh, podcast, which is at musclebuildingmastery.net. Um, also, one other thing is you can head to trainingmastery.net forward slash join. And if you're one of the first people to listen to this podcast, then you're in luck because the first 25 people to head to that webpage are going to get access to the Training Mastery video course for £260 off, which is uh, comes out at £37 for the whole course, which is usually on sale for nearly £300. So that's a few things. That's a little bit, a little bit of an update on um, what's going on. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about um, delt training or shoulder training, right? Because we were last time we did this podcast, we were in the middle of um, talking about each muscle individually in this mini series of muscle building spotlights. Um, so we're going to we're going to cover shoulder training now. The other um, episodes. We went in a certain format, and I'm going to switch it up a little bit today, um, because if you've listened to um, the previous episodes on the sort of mini um, series of of muscle building specific spotlights, then you'll know a lot of the tips I was giving were very similar, just with slight differences for each muscle. So all of those things still apply to the delts, but I'm going to give you some other more really specific stuff for the delts of the shoulders that um, only really apply to the shoulders this time, okay? So there's three big things, three big points that I want to make with the delts. And the first of those are um, presses, okay? So before before we start, in fact, let, let's, 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 let's break down the, the delts into, into the constituent parts. There's three constituent parts of the delts or the shoulders, right? There's the front delt, the side delt, and the rear delt, okay? So, you know, on anterior, uh, posterior, and lateral i think it's called right the 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 scientific name but we're just going to say front side and rear because you know me and you can have a frank conversation now here's here's the points that i want to make so first and foremost the first most important thing you can do if you want to develop your shoulders is do presses okay do overhead presses this is the most bang for your book movement this is the movement that you're going to get the biggest return on investment from doing does that make sense because this is while this is primarily a front delt movement, you're also going to get um, uh, 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 a bunch of tension on your side delts as well, and you're going to get a bunch of tension on your rear delts as well, okay? Now, this is primarily a front delt movement, like I said, but this is the only front delt movement I do. I do an overhead press twice a week. That's it. That's all I do for my front delts. Now, I do other stuff for the other side, other areas of the delts we're going to talk about in a minute, but the biggest and most important thing you can do for your overall development of your delts is to press. Now, the press you do doesn't really matter that much uh, as the fact that you actually do it in the first place, okay? So sometimes you can do a military press. Sometimes you can do a seated military press. Sometimes you could do a Smith machine press. Sometimes you could do a dumbbell press. Sometimes you could do a specific shoulder machine press that's built for pressing with the shoulders, right? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Sometimes I do, I mix it completely and I do like a single arm standing dumbbell press, you know? And it, it, the, the fact of the matter is, as long as you're pressing something above your head, 
you're going to be getting the uh, right amount of tension and the right amount of pressing power um, that you need to build big delts. That's also going to have a carry over to other stuff as well. Like the like, there's a direct correlation that I've noticed where the stronger you can get pressing overhead, the stronger you get pressing horizontally, which means like your bench press will go up. So if you want to get a bigger bench press, start pressing overhead because there's a direct correlation. I'm telling you right now between a strong overhead press and a strong bench press. So. That's one of the many reasons to, to overhead press. Now, like I say, it doesn't matter what kind of press you do, just do something. I would recommend picking one or two of those overhead presses and then running with those one or two. Don't keep changing it up, you know? I know it's tempting to change it up and it's like, oh, God, I want to keep it interesting or, you know, I, I want to keep muscle confusion, which is a bullshit term that doesn't mean anything. But, yeah, but... um you know, I, I would recommend picking one or two movements and just running with those and getting strong at those. And then when you start to plateau and you can't push it any higher, change them that movement out at that point and then get strong at another movement. You know, so it's not that you have to do the same press for the, for the rest of your life, but just stick with it for maybe six to eight weeks and see how it goes and progress it. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to pay attention to your side and rear delts. Now, um, the only way you're going to get your side and rear delts to grow, so if you want your shoulders to look wider or, or better from the back, then you need to train your side and rear delts. You know, pressing pressing it alone isn't enough. Now, it does bring in some side and some rear delt tension, but it doesn't bring in enough for them to, to grow, in my opinion, properly. Um, so there's two movements that you need to do. Now, again, these are... Um, you, you can do whatever variation of these you choose... But I would recommend choosing a couple of different variations for each one and plonking them into your program there. Okay, and doing a couple of times a week. Right. So the first one is side raises or lateral raises, right? Now you can do these with dumbbells, obviously. Most people do them with dumbbells. They're fine. Dumbbells are fine. Okay. You can also do them on cables. You can also do them with a barbell with an, what's called an upright row, which is going to, um, if done properly, hit the side delts as well. The best side delt movement that I've ever found was cuffed cable uh, uh, side raises, okay? So this this is a movement, and again, it's hard to describe this without showing you visually, but you, the, I might post one on my Instagram um, soon. So if you head to uh, Andy Clement, so on, and you'll probably be able to see a video of, of me doing these on there soon. Um but essentially what you do is you, you're going to have to buy it like for about the, the very inexpensive, a couple of pounds on, on Amazon, um, buy a uh, a couple of wrist cuffs, right? And you tie, you put the wrist cuffs on and then you're going to, uh, you're going to cross your arms over and attach your right hand to the left side of a cable and your left hand to the right side of a cable. That makes sense. Okay. Then you're going to lie down on a bench and you're going to perform side raises with the cuffs okay so what this does is it allows you to pull more from your delt because you're not pulling from your hand your hand's taken out of the equation because the attachment is on your wrist rather than on your hand and what always happens doesn't matter how hard you try it always happens is when you're pulling from the hand you're getting less tension from the delt because the hand is what's doing the, the, the movement right the hand's what's what's pulling so that's um that's what i've found to be massively massively beneficial for growing the side delts now the other benefit to using cables over dumbbells is that using dumbbells the hardest part of the exercise is where your um your your hand is furthest away from your body which is right at the top of the movement okay and that's uh, uh, that could be a really really hard part of the exercise and that's because the force that you're fighting against when you're doing dumbbell side raises is gravity right so while you're stood uh, you know, if you if you go the opposite way and you, you 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 put your hand right next to your thigh, which is at the bottom of the movement, that's just standing there with dumbbells. You know, there's no there's no tension there. So for the first half of the movement, there's very little tension on the side delts because gravity. You know, you're not you're not uh, far enough away from your body for gravity to take effect on the delts, right? So there's very little happening. Now the opposite is true on the cables because obviously the line of force you're going against is the line of the cable. The hardest part of the exercise is normally either the mid or bottom range, and the tension starts to actually drop off as you reach the top. Okay, so 
this means that it doesn't mean it's better than dumbbells, but it does mean that it's a good um, thing to, to put in alongside dumbbells because then you're getting strong with the dumbbells at the top of the movement and you're getting strong with the cables at the bottom of the movement. So you're giving yourself twice the opportunity to grow the side delts because you're getting strong across all ranges of the movement. OK, so that's the side delts. Now, the rear delts, again, I mean, you can see you, you can apply the same thinking for the rear delts. You can use the rear delt flies. Um, with dumbbells, you can use the rear delt flies with cables, you can use the cuffs, like we said, on the rear delt flies, um, uh, uh, you know, standing standing variation that I've done sometimes, not quite not quite as effective, I don't think, as the side raise variation, but still pretty good, um, and then there's another there's another movement that I find is probably, this is my, probably my favourite for the rear delts, is um, the reverse pec deck, so if you've, if you've seen a pec deck machine that's for the chest that kind of reverses into uh, where you can put the handles right back, uh, and sit facing the other way with your chest on the pad, then you can do reverse uh, pec deck for rear delt flies, um, which a uh, really, really useful way to put tension through there. So there's a few different variations, but I recommend picking, again, picking two of each of those. So pick two side raise variations, like the dumbbell side raise and the cuff cable side raise, and get strong at those. And then two rear delt variations, like the reverse pec deck and the dumbbell reverse flies, for example. And um, again, get strong at those. And make sure that you're keeping the tension on that target muscle. So that's the first two movements, presses and the rear and side delt movements. The last one is more of an execution, more of a technique tip, okay? Now, this doesn't apply necessarily to presses very much unless you're pressing really, really badly, <laughs> um, which you, you shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that hard. But it does apply to the second um, tip, which, which was the side and rear delts. Now, the biggest reason if somebody is including a lot of side and rear delt volume in their program and they're not growing, the biggest reason for that will probably be the way that they're performing their movements. And the biggest fix for that normally is to eliminate trap involvement. Okay, so by traps, I mean the muscles on your mid and upper back. Um, and that was the subject of the last podcast that we did um, on mid back. So you need to eliminate the movement of the traps. Now, on a side raise, that would be shrugging the shoulders. So you need to stop shrugging the shoulders. Okay, so as you pull your elbows and your arms up and out to the side, it needs to be just the arms that are coming up and out to the side and not the shoulders coming up towards the ears. The more you pull the shoulders up towards the ears and you shrug your shoulders, the more you're going to feel your traps. And that's going to take tension away from the delts and put it on the traps, okay? So eliminate that shrugging movement now the same is true with the rear delt fly movement so when you're doing let's for, say for example the reverse pec deck that we talked about earlier if you're doing that movement you need to make sure that the movement is pulling the elbow out you know and pulling the arms away from the body without moving your shoulder blades because most people get on this reverse pec deck they'll stack a load of weight on and then they'll just proceed to squeeze their shoulder blades together all the time. And you're just doing a, a, a really poor version of a row. You know, you're just doing a really poor back movement. And it's not for the back, it's for the rear delts. So those are a few things to think about the next time you're doing your rear delts and your side delt movements. Um, and, you know, if you, if you implement, I think, those three tips of pressing and getting strong at presses, um, paying attention to the side raises and the rear delt flies, and then eliminating the trap movement on the side raises and the rear delt flies, I think that you'll see a very big difference in the um, strength and size of your shoulders and the way that your um, upper body overall looks and feels. So I hope that was useful, guys. If it was, then please um, don't forget to, if you are on iTunes, drop me a review and let me know what you think and um, subscribe to this podcast because we're going to be doing a lot more of them and don't forget to head over to my Instagram at andyclements01 give us a little tickle on that follow button and um, you know there's lots of free stuff that goes out every single day normally twice a day to be honest um, with muscle building and videos and training tips and nutrition tips and fat loss tips and all the stuff like that um, and don't forget to head to um, trainingmastery.net forward slash join to be one of the first 25 people to get a massive massive discount on the training mastery video course hope that was useful guys and i will speak to you next time on the muscle building mastery podcast cheers if you're ready to stop wasting time in the gym and start mastering the skill of muscle building, go check out www.musclebuildingmastery.net to download your free six-week muscle building workout plan. 
I have specifically formulated this workout plan to take you through the three stages of mastering your body, layering on a more advanced training methodology each week as you progress. That means that regardless of where you are with your training right now, this plan will push you forward and help you stack on more muscle and strength in just six weeks. So head to www.musclebuildingmastery.net now to grab your free six-week workout plan.